laser leaves, a little laser here to uh, line it up. <laughs> to line it up and then you can see the, the green bead on a white sheet of paper and that's how I normally get it into the center. And what you do is once you get that done, you, put, you, you get it to where you get a full green disc out there. And you know when you move back and forth, you, you'll see the, the, um, the green disc and the shrink into the center of the mirror and it'll get larger. And you want it just where it gets out to the edge and that's your focal length. Okay. Usually and you and we actually have to divide that in half for your actual focal length. Okay. And watch the screen here. You want to try to pronounce it? Mm -hmm. I can't pronounce it. What? I was writing. It's a diffraction it's grading. It's a diffraction it's grading. grading, yes. Raunchy. It is. Raunchy. 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 So what do you think? Is it a yeah, spear or a spear? It's a spear. Well, it yeah. should be because there's been no correction done to it. It's a spear. And we've, so done, we've done really short strokes, so we shouldn't have turned the edge down. And the edge is not turned out. Okay, very when good. When I did the night edge okay. test, okay. it did not come in as a donut. Mm -hmm. We turned down the edges or dip in the middle, okay. and it's, it's flat. And what you do with the night edge is you bring it in halfway, and then you can move it back and forth mm -hmm. on the night edge. And you'll see the shadow flip sides, mm -hmm. and where it flips, that's your focal length. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So this, this is the mirror that's been being being worked on by mostly kids for the last oh, I don't know three four years uh, at different star yeah. parties. You know, yeah. maybe once yeah. or twice a year, I get it out, and the kids would work on it. We and we okay. worked mostly with 60 grit. And then we worked with 100 grit, and it didn't make much noise then, so the kids didn't like to play with it as much because it was quieter. <laughs> and uh, so after finishing with 100 grit, I thought, well, I'll just finish the grinding myself. And uh, so I got it ground out, and I found it focal length was too long. I went back and did it again. For the six-inch mirror, it wasn't a big deal. I hadn't really been paying too much attention to the focal length because I wasn't really concerned about it. It was just a demonstration project, you yeah. know. So, so uh, then. Uh, uh, the the last uh, the, uh, the the last astronomy day we had over at uh, uh, what's the name of the uh, uh, mesquite yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we actually finished polishing in one day and that's partially due to Steve I can't remember his last name but he's the guy that uh, the, Engelman. yeah Steve Engelman who is the uh, IDA rep. the IDA the uh, dark International dark. The international, dark. I can't remember the name. I dark dark uh, Sky Association. Yeah, Dark Sky Association. He really wanted to work on it, and he's big and strong, and he just finished it, and it was making a squeaking noise. I said, well, that's what you want. Just hold on that squeaking noise, and if it starts to get tight, then don't push it any further because it'll, 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 it will, uh, it will physically attach the the uh, mirror to the uh, tool. So it's done, and uh, now, 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 now we can look at it and see that it's a sphere, which is what you, what you want before we find it. When you have the sphere, then what, you're just going to take and, and grind the edges down, so you bring it down? Well, well, yeah, but I mean, you, basically you've got this. Probably the outer, outer inch and the outer Okay. okay. If, you're, if, if it's here, here's the picture right here. Um, what, what kind of strokes will you be using now to finish it? Well, there's a variety of ones. Yeah, that's that's basically what we're out. getting. One that's, uh, here. Sort of, generally, you just go back and forth, so, back and forth. This is stuff. showing you where the knife yeah. is, moving the knife edge back and forth, yeah. and what you see is yeah. it flips from side to side. So this is in focus? Or that's the focal length? That, that yeah. is it. Yeah. If it's a paraboloid and you're at the center of curvature of the... Uh, three quarters zone. This is 0.707 zone, which which it means uh, one over the square root of two of the radius of the mirror. If that's how far you are out, then that's that's the pattern you'll get, and that's where you do the overall test. There's a there's a thing about that that, that people don't get because this pattern seems so weird. We get get a minute. I'll everybody quiet. I'll try to kind of explain that because I think. 
it's a good thing for people to kind of know. It helps you visualize what's going on. <laughs> so this is what you're shooting for. Right. Right. And, but remember that if, if you are at the center of curvature of any given zone on the mirror, when you move the knife edge in, that zone will darken evenly all the way around. That, that zone, both sides of that zone, will go dark at the same time. You don't have a light on the left and dark on the right. Uh, so so this, is a, this is the overall thing that you get of the entire mirror when you're at that point uh, and you're moving it in. But, for, but when you're doing a coup de screen and you're isolating zones, what you're doing is finding the center of curvature of each of those zones. Yeah. And that's changing continuously from a minimum at the center of the mirror to a maximum. And that's what I'm struggling with uh, with mine. I got mine out in the, in the truck. Because uh, I'm at this point, and I haven't really done the knife edge and look at it like this yet. I have used the... the uh, it's a sphere. And that's the easiest way I know to explain it all, is to take a mirror that's spherical, and start with that, and then say, okay, now how do we change the mirror to get it to be a paraboloid, which is what we want. Because the sphere has a particular property that nothing else has here. Every point on that sphere is the same distance from the light source. It's all the same, because it's a sphere. It's a constant radius. So if you have the source of the light right there at the center of curvature of that mirror, and the light goes out and hits the mirror, at what angle does it hit the surface of the mirror? So it's also it's everywhere. everywhere. Right. Yeah. So what does it do when it reflects? It goes directly back on itself. Only a sphere does that. Right. Right. So you can't use a sphere for a good image unless you have the source of the light that you're looking at, the object you're looking at at the center of curvature of the mirror. Right. And it's pretty hard to get a star to cooperate. <laughs> well, down at and that point, you could just there. kind of look up. Yeah. <laughs> so it'd be burning up. Since the star, or the moon, or whatever, is effectively at an infinite distance, the light rays do not hit the mirror at all coming from this right. point. They all hit in a parallel bundle. So now the task is to reflect the bundle back so that a, they all come to a point. Right. If the mirror is spherical, they will not. Right. And the fact that they don't is called what? Spherical aberration. Oh, yeah. Spherical. <laughs> An aberration yeah. is a deviation say, from spherical. what you so, want. Right. But what you want is all of those totally light right. rays to come to the same place. They don't because a sphere can't do that with a parallel bundle of light. It can only do it with a with light that's you know originating at the same place you want to send it back to. Okay, now with the Foucault knife edge tester. You have the ability to move it back and forth like this and to measure how far you've moved it. Pay real close attention to this part, Joe. This is the part you were asking about. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you use the dial indicator to, to track dis differences in this distance here. In other words, as you move it back and forth, you can measure how much you move it to within a thousandth of an inch. And you can move it, move the knife edge in and out this way by tilting it with this knob. Now the knife edge is going to come in and intercept the little the bundle of light rays that are coming and crossing at some point, okay? And if it's a spherical mirror and you're precisely at the center of curvature of the mirror and you've got your eye down there and, and your eye is catching those returning rays from the mirror and you move that knife edge across, what will happen to the image you see? What will change? No. Good, good guess. That's, that's how what we're talking about for finding, roughly finding the center curvature, moving a light source back and forth. Because the, the direction that the image appears to move depends on whether you're inside the radius or outside the radius. So that's how you find where the radius is. But when you look with your eye at the mirror, it's, it's brightly illuminated. Mm -hmm. And when you move the knife edge in, if you're at the exact center of curvature, what happens to the image? It flips, it gets dark at night. It just darkens. It just yeah. darkens. Uniformly. Yeah. All over. Oh. And that's and the key. It does not darken left to right, top to bottom. You do not see any kind of a donut shape. All you see is a bright thing that just gets dimmer and dimmer. That's if everything's perfect. Okay. Okay? Right. Now again, that's not what we want in the scope, but that's what we would have here with the spherical mirror. 
Now, if it's not a spherical mirror, it's a paraboloid. And what does that mean? It means that the radius of curvature in the center part of it is a certain value. As you move out from there, what happens to the radius of curvature? It increases. It, it gets increases. It, it but the radius, oh, the radius. It, it gets larger. Larger. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 yes, yeah. it flattens out, it which flattens, is a way of right. saying a larger it gets radius of curvature. Correct. So, and the fact is, from the equations, you can calculate exactly what that radius should be at any given place on the mirror if you want a mirror of a certain focal length. Right. You know okay. the diameter. And that's where the CUDE screens come in because the CUDE screens give you the ability to mask off the mirror except allow you to see two sections equal on e either side of the center at the same distance out. And when you get it to where those two darken exactly the same, where are you? You're at the center of curvature of that zone of the mirror. And then what that means is, as you look in the center, you find a place where it darkens evenly, and then you move out here to a zone at some particular point, and you find where that darkens evenly, and you'll find that, to make that happen, you've had to move this back. And the distance you move it back, measured by this, plugged into the formula, will tell you the exact radius of curvature of that zone of the mirror. So you work through this thing with, mm. these, with these screens, okay, and that's what, that's what we're about here. Okay. Now, the other part that people often don't understand is the donut. We have something like this. Mm -hmm. Now, why do we have a pattern like that? This is the pattern you get when you're looking for an overall impression of the mirror visually to see that you don't have major problems. This doesn't give you real quantitative information. This doesn't tell you the radius of curvature of the different zones of the mirror. But it says right off to somebody that's experienced, hey, that's a paraboloid. Because that's the characteristic pattern for a paraboloid. But why is that? Why in the world would it look like that? Well, th this book shows you with, you know, diagrams of the, the bundle of rays and the knife edge moving in and all that stuff. The easiest way I find to think of it is try to imagine if that mirror, oh, now this goes back to when I was a junior in college, I have not dealt with that since then. <laughs> I can't tell you what happened 10 minutes ago. <laughs> you can pretend that this mirror surface is being illuminated by a light off to the side and it's coming at a grazing angle across the mirror. Okay? And that mirror, if it's perfectly spherical, will be uniformly illuminated by that and if it's not perfectly spherical there will be places that stick up into the light and places mm -hmm. that are shadowed that are down and darker just like when you're looking at the terminator on the moon and you see you know it's it's, right. it's, it's kind of like that and so that's what produces that characteristic donut pattern because if it's a paraboloid the edges of the mirror are going to be brightly lit because they are sticking up and are catching the light. And the part in the center in this zone right here is going to be down in shadow right. and this is going to be up in the light. That's a light coming across oh. in this direction, you see. Because this edge of the mirror is shadowing this part. Mm -hmm. But this sticks up enough to be back out into the light. So just, you know, kind of visualize that and and where is the knife edge when you're doing this? As far as how is it, how far is it from the from the mirror? That's, that's the critical part. The mirror, the knife edge should be at the center of curvature of the 0.707 zone, one on the square root of two. In other words, if if, you guess, if this is a if this is a 10 inch mirror, pretend, okay? You you want to come out 0.707 times the five inch radius. That's about what three and a half inches, and you'll be three and a half inches out. And at that zone, you want to be if you want to have the knife edge at the center of curvature of that zone, and that's when you'll get this characteristic donut shape. Okay. And, and and if you move it a little bit, you'll get a, you'll get a shape that sort of tries to do that, but it can't quite. But if you use a CUDE screen and you and you mask off 
everything except just a slit here and here, and, and they're centered on those .707 zones. And you get that knife edge to where it darkens both of those two at exactly the same time when it comes in. If they darken together, you're at the radius of curvature for that zone, and that's where when you take a screen away, you'll get that characteristic. Okay. Okay. I have that out of my truck. You want me to bring in my mirror and if somebody will readjust the bolts down Mirror there, with the screen? Uh, with the screens. I brought the color oh. screens. If you want to, sure. Let yeah, me do whatever. that. Whatever. Um, can you take well, the, the only the problem is we have one project we need the light on for and your project we probably need the light off for. Okay. So maybe we should just look at seeing, first let's find out if your mirror will fit in this scope here. Because, okay, let me go Because we were also talking about and, star and, testing. I'll bring it in for okay. all of it just in case. And uh, it's yeah. tree zone. Yeah. Or I think you can this is, yeah. Yeah. this is the one that I used the most when I was uh, I was star testing my scope because this shows you what it looks like when when your scope is perfect right here. When I take a look at, at, at one of the uh, scopes that Tom mm -hmm. you know, has, like I look at his, he has, he has near perfect mirrors, mm -hmm. and it looks the same inside as outside, real close, oh, oh, real right. close wow. to the same, you see? Mm -hmm. Look at that. And, and, well, let me see that. Can you see that in the video? Yeah, yeah. see? Inside. Inside, inside. And, and, out, outside. And, and outside, and that's just a little bit out of focus one way and just a little bit out of focus the other way and this way it's more for way out way in, way in. But, but they the had is the about the same on the, on the line above yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're not getting the oblong yeah direction. yeah so this is almost, almost yeah the mirror's in, in perfect almost collimation perfect yeah, but, it's, but it's 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 not for that's cool a perfect parabola right for the scope it's, it, it's off just a little and bit they're always going to be off a little bit you can never be perfect right, right, right. but you know, what, what about this this is uh, this is for a this is for a uh, a for a, a for a mirror that has an okay. obstruction. This is for a, a uh, uh, unobstructed, yeah, an unobstructed view. So this is the one you're going to use the most if you're working with mirrors because. How would you get an uh, unobstructed view? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Well, there you were are, testing it there are with some equipment or something. There, there are, well, this is just for working at night with a scope, yeah. with a mirror in, in a scope. So, uh, anyway, there's a whole lot of things that can go wrong. Hmm. The problem with star testing as your only, only source well, is if you have multiple things wrong, it's real hard to well, figure out actually, what's wrong. Actually, you know? isn't there a, like an offset Cassie grain? Yeah. Instead yeah. of reflecting yeah. back, you're yeah. reflecting up into another tube. Yeah. So you're you're actually kind of a Z pattern. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's but then you have to grind the mirror really, really yeah. strange. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have an artificial star used for calling in my refractors. It makes it easy if I can do it at home in the controlled situation. Yeah. It's tough to do it out in the field. Yeah, so mm -hmm. okay. Okay. You wanna you wanna work on this uh, oh, yeah. on this motor? We have a, we have another project down here if you wanna come down here if you wanna see what this is. Yeah. Right. Have you uh, have you tested that? I brought my camera so I can take pictures of it. Okay. The reason yeah. I say that is a piece of I didn't bring my magazine with, okay. with, the, with the picture, so I, I can't show. I, can't, I, I can't show. What? I have a picture of it. You have a picture of it? I have it because uh, Joe was on the I do have a picture of it. I didn't know. This is what the scope looked like when it was new. Oh yeah, I've seen that. You've seen that. It's kind of like a park. Didn't park make something like that? What's that number? One hundred and ninety-four dollars. One hundred and ninety-four dollars. It's a uh, six-inch dinoscope. Six-inch dinoscope. One hundred ninety-four bucks. One hundred ninety-four dollars for a six-inch like dinoscope. <laughs> and uh, this is the pin. This is the uh, the drive. This is um, this is some more parts here. These are the you know the uh, legs for it here. And I also have at home the uh, the six-inch mirror. This is the one that gave you the pieces. This is the one that came in pieces. And a uh, a uh, a uh, 
uh, uh, a secondary mayor and holder. They're all in, in near perfect condition. What you did they were in a bag, but that, yeah, they were in a they were in a paper sack. I picked this up uh, on somebody's lawn. I had a I had a paper sack and this laying on the lawn. <laughs> Rattling around, going. I have no idea what's inside oh, the paper great. sack. You know. So, so, um, this is what, this. This is a classic. Yeah. Did you, classic. you did not have the two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look at that. I had no two. Yeah. And That's and amazing. and you, if you remember the email, the email said. Look, look at that though. It's scope called parts. DC. Yeah. Please, please, pick, please up pick up. Please pick up. Please pick up the scope parts. Please pick up the scope parts. Yes. No. Well, this, well, was one of part. Even this was one of them. <laughs> so with the mayor and the secondary, <laughs> and I've got and it, most of the two. Oh, here. Oh, Brad, you know these are considered to be a classic <laughs> scope. Yes. This is a classic. The Dinoscope I, six inch. It was unfortunately, a classic. That's what scope. I've been. Unfortunately, they're not worth a lot of. Money. If well, you unless, they're, one, unless they're in not, perfect sir, condition. No, even in perfect condition, they're only worth maybe five hundred dollars. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're actually. Do you have? Oh, okay. The other ring that's right here. Yeah. I, 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 I've got the two rings. And uh, so you're gonna need to find the two. One part I am missing that I could use is I need the knobs here on the end. I don't have the knobs. If anybody has any extra knobs. Yeah, we've got to think that. Well, if you replace the focuser, then you're not. It's re, not original. You're not. No, not rebuilding. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like you know, this is with the, the, the old thing. stock. Andy, I was going to show oh, yeah. it's, it's just friction. Yeah. Yeah. This is the whole thing. There isn't a missing top. That is the way it was made. The eyepiece, yeah, I'll go get an eyepiece. It just sits down in there and it's held with the friction. There's cuts in the brass. And it's been, it's, yeah. Pop it in there. Yep. I've never seen one like that until. They were, they were just plastic like knobs that's all they yeah. were yeah. they weren't metal or anything you know shiny aluminum or anything <laughs> So I would kind of look mm -hmm. out of place if you had somebody machine you a couple of nice knobs. For right, that. it wouldn't. They, and you can buy wait, them. Wait, those knobs are worth more than the scope. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the way it goes in. It it, it snaps in. It's now, is that tight. Okay, so that just uses a standard one and a quarter. Any standard one and a quarter? Because that's a Nagler, right, or a, this or a, is a Teleview. This is a Teleview. And, and the secondary mirror on this thing is fairly small, so you probably keep the whole okay. thing as an inch and a quarter. Finish. You know, yeah, sir. Yeah. Is this is the point. Yeah. Uh, if it had a knob on it, 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 it had a knob on it. 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 I tell you what, it gives you uh, enough travel the yeah. is great. to cover the eyepieces you yeah. need, and that means you've got to have the mirror location much more accurate than if you've got a big, tall, tall long travel focus. Oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Kind of that's right. 20 millimeters. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's back on the same. Yeah. What's that? Okay, I want to take a shot of that. All right. Good deal. Hey, what we're looking at is a gearing in this old Dyna Dynamax right ascension drive. That's right. And it's got a nice, pretty, look how clean that motor is. Okay. And it's got a nice uh, brass looking gear in there. It's got old grease on it, but looks pretty darn good for how old. I don't know exactly when this was made. It's at least it, it's 30, at least years 30 old. 40. It's probably yeah. about 30, 40 years old. Yeah. yeah. Probably never been opened up. Probably not. Based on how pristine it looks inside, I didn't yeah. expect it to look that good. Pretty cool. It is. It is. All right, we're recording. All right, so what we're doing here is we're trying to see if this motor works. And we're going to see if it burns up. We already tried that. Well, but the power strip was turned off. Oh, All right, is yes. the motor working? Well, and if it were working, it would be running really slow because it's yeah. a stepping motor. And uh, I don't know if we can tell if it's running or not. I don't feel any vibrations in it. Um, what I can do is I'll grab my meter and see if we're at least getting, if this cord is any good, I should have voltage right here. So, give me just a step. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we get. That's right. Let's see what we get here. Well, you can so buy not, those little You're not motors. picking up any good vibrations, huh? I am not. I am not picking up any good vibrations. You might not have current. I've got 120 volts right there. So we're getting we're getting power to the motor. 
all, all the way right here to these wire nuts. Again, this is that Dynamax motor that uh, we yeah. just unboxed. It's about 30 years old. We don't even know if it works. The gears are solid state though. That's the yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, the gears, the gears are, are perfect. perfect. They're in great, in great shape. There are some set screws that we need to you know, tighten up. There's a there's also a clutch in here. Well you're gonna need to take the whole axis apart. Yep. You know, both of them and clean them up and put mobile one in there. You know, the, the clutch isn't as in bad a shape as I thought it would be. It's actually in pretty decent shape. I know it's not corroded or anything. Uh -uh. No, it's not. Well, see how see how it stops when I spin it. That's the clutch doing that. Yeah. The only reason it spins like this is because this unit is not properly. But uh, there's, it's actually getting me giving me feedback. But it is still engaging the gear so that when we let go, the clutch will then grab it and continue to rotate it. Yeah, but you know the grease in there is 30 years old. Grease is grease. Yeah. Man. It's been around for thousands of years. Millions of years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's probably fun. I just... Um, well, those motors should be fairly easy to get, though. I think so. I've heard they are. We can... We're absolutely sure that gear is not turning or anything. You're not feeling anything. I don't feel any kind of a... Uh, turning motion or anything. Can you hear anything? No, I can't, but let me try it again now that we've actually got it plugged in. I'm gonna try an old trick my dad taught me where you use mm -hmm. a you use a um, screwdriver. screwdriver as a stethoscope. Y'all be quiet for one minute. You know the stethoscope you use, huh? It's running. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's definitely running. When I, it's very faint, but when I put it on there, when I put the when I put the uh, screwdriver and then put it up to my ear, I hear a faint running. So I think the motor is good. One way to be sure would be to leave it running for a long time. Let's see what it does. Right? Let's see if it actually turns on. Turns on us. But I think it is. I think it's working. Wow. So that's a good sign. That's a really good sign. <laughs> you could just leave it plugged in and lock it down and we could come back and see if it moves in 30 yes, minutes. Absolutely. In fact, what I'll do is, is I will set this to where it's... I'll just leave it running there for a minute. Because I can see where the grease is on there. And I'll just come back in a few minutes and if the worm dry, if the worm You could mark it a little bit with a little grease or something. Yes. And see if that grease moves. Yep, it's, yep absolutely. Okay, well let's just let it run there for five to ten minutes. Check back later. So basically, so there we've was, come back here a little while later and the grease did move. So. The grease moved a lot. So um, there's a line uh, over here of grease on this worm gear and it was way over to the left and now it's moved very far over to the right. I think. Yeah. I'm going to let it run just a little while longer just to keep playing with it just to make sure that I'm not mistaken but it looks like it's moving. Hmm. So if when everybody got quiet earlier, I heard a little something with the screwdriver. Right. And so, um, they actually make a mechanics... Uh, no, um... Or is that what you said? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I thought you said that. I asked Tom if you had one, but he was Oh, yeah, you can buy them. My dad used to use them. And what we got going here is uh, Glenn's been working on a mirror for many months now, and he's just about finished. And they are mounting it in this uh, telescope that Dale owns, and uh, they're going to see, you know, what it looks like. I made this to be fair and fairly simple. You can get it out because when you're protesting, you have to do a lot of putting the scope in. And, okay, we can take these and pull them all the way in and see how much, see how far they go in. Well, that's actually quite good. And this piece of, uh, what is this, wood or? Wood. Wood, yeah, this piece wood. of wood on the back. Now, it may, it may leave a little dents and stuff. Oh, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, well, actually, those, those bolts are about the right way. So you can actually about right. You want to have it unbacked this just to get this three stops off. Okay, so you want to have it in the corner of an inch or so. So that's about right. Now that's another balance. 
By the way, this is a uh, scope that Zale made that was featured in Sky and Telescope several months back. Uh, it's a collapsible scope and uh, kind of a different design on it. It's very easy to carry around and collapse and then expand. You should have bought it. Very, very light. You turn around and sell them. Sell the optics. Yeah, I know. There, it's great. Say, Dale, show us how that scope moves left and right. What? Show us how that scope moves left and right. Yeah. Up and down. And the real, the real important thing is that it moves this way. Oh, that's nice. nice. With one. Yeah. Finger. I learned that from Tom by watching, you know, years of building teleports, and also the fact that he lent me a little bit of the uh, Teflon that he uses. <laughs> More than that, you have to actually, you have to get the balance point exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to want to go this way or this and, uh, way. No, where is it pivoting? It's actually riding on the it, the rails. Okay. Yeah. So, nice. Just a, just, a, just, a, just a four points. Four points. You see the four pieces of Teflon? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. Go ahead and pick that up and flip it around. Flip it, flip it around the bottom. See? So yeah. Here. So what is that material? This. Uh -huh. This. I think is, this is. For, it's called ebony laminate. Ebony, yeah. 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 Ebony star. Ebony, yeah. Uh, well, of think, course, it'd have to be ebony star. I think and, uh, scope stuff. So and uh, this you can't, you can't get it. Very you, easy. You, you can set the pressure here. Yeah. yeah. So you, you oh, feel that. Oh, feel oh, like very just, nice. Just feel that. Just there's a little yeah. bit of drag. Oh, wow. A little bit of drag. You see? Nice. Yeah, that's a bit. Well, you've got to have some drag. You can't have. Oh yeah, this direction. Yeah. Yeah. I bought that Skywatcher. This motion right here is what throws it out on the azimuth. Yeah. Yeah. Like you give a little push. I I think it's just, it's you know, about the third time around, it would finally stop. Oh really? Yeah. All that thing had absolutely no friction. Now the 12 inch has ball bearings in the base, right? Uh, it, well, it's actually I don't know if you call them needle bearings or they're they're not ball bearings. They're the Elongated. Oh, they're like cylinder. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so mine does not have bearings. The, the smaller ones just have, uh, they just ride on Teflon. Just on the Teflon. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. I would like to that is, it, yeah. it, it, like I said, you, have to, you know, I adjusted the way that the instructions said to. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I could do, could do this. Just and it would still, be, you know, it, it would stop maybe about right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was very just, cool. You know, cool. I, I said the wind would be going all over the place. Oh, yeah. So we need to shorten the teeth down. Let's just see what we see. So you think this is about an F5 mirror? About an F5, yeah. I'm going to and the local Korea store. I'm going to have a TDI. No, it's a metal tube. And uh, so this is a magnetic one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go get some. It's a little different. And what we're doing now is we're trying to do a star test on this scope. We've inserted that ground and polished mirror into that scope just as a test. And we're trying to do a star test in the daytime with an uncoated mirror. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks a little weird just looking at it because of the view. I've been with the back of it. It looks a little odd. 